Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I do all the hacker rank and lead code problems. I have solution playlists on my channel. Check those out. Uh, just going in order here. So we have self-dividing numbers. Uh, a self-dividing number is a number that is divisible by every digit it contains. For example, 128 is a self-dividing number because 128 um, remainder 1 uh, is equal to 0. So 1 goes into 128 perfectly because that's the first digit, two goes in perfectly, that's the second digit, and eight also goes in perfectly. Um, if the digit goes in perf is perfectly divisible by the number, then the remainder is zero, obviously. And if it's greater than zero, then it's not divisible by that number. So um, also a self-dividing number is not allowed to contain the digit zero. So if the digit zero is anywhere in here, then also that is not a self-dividing number. So given a lower and upper bound, uh, I'll put a list of every possible self-dividing number, including the bounds if possible. So there's two ways to do this um, that I think are actually reasonable. There's probably, there's a lot of ways to do it, but there's two main ways to do this, um, right? So we have to return a list of all of the numbers that are self-dividing between these boundaries, right? So we're, to, we're gonna have to loop from one to 22 and then on each number, we're going to have to check if it is self-dividing. So we're going to use a separate method for sure. Um, this is going to be a Boolean method called is self-dividing. If I could spell dividing right. Um, and it's going to take in the current number. And then it's going to do something in here to check if it's self-dividing. Um, so we're going to have a list of integers. That's what we're returning from this method called self-dividing nums, right? That's set to an array list. Okay, then we're gonna have to loop from the left boundary to less than or equal the right boundary because it says including the bounds if possible. Um, I plus plus, and then we're just gonna do if is self dividing on the current num between the boundaries of I, then just do self dividing nums dot add I, right? Just add it into that output array because we know it's self-dividing. This is a Boolean. If it is self-dividing, we'll add it into the array. If it's not, we won't. And at the end, we'll just return the array. That's what we have to return anyway. I cannot spell self-dividing. Divid, divid, David, divide, ing. Gosh. Uh, return self-dividing nums, right? So now all we have to do is implement a uh, method to check each number. So each number is getting called within this range. Um, so we have to check each number and make sure that it is self-dividing. And how do we do that? We have to make sure that the whole number is divisible by each digit of it and there's no zeros within it. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to do a loop. And we're going, the one of the methods of doing this is to actually convert the number into a string because converting it to a string makes it easy to loop through character by character, and then we just check um, the number version of the character. Um, we just convert the, each character back into a number and check the number if the number is divisible by it. So it's just converting it to a string makes is always a way that makes it really easy to loop through, you know, digits or characters of something. So we're gonna do for char c in um, it, it's an object loop in string dot value of, and string is a class, and uh, value of is just going to convert our current number into a, its string format, and then we're also gonna call it two, char array to get the character array version of this, the string version of this number. So now we have all the characters in, of this number uh, for each number in the range, and what we wanna do now is do a check. First of all, if C is equal to character of zero, well, that's not allowed. So we can already, or, so that's a false. So, and then we have this other condition too. So, or, so if C is equal to zero, or what's another failing condition? If it's not divisible, right, by the current character, or if um, the num is, so the num that we pass in here is still an integer. We just, for the duration of the for loop, we got the string value and we're looping through the chart, right? If the num, 
um, remainder of the current character's value, the actual ASCII value. So we, if we want the ASCII value, I've done this in a lot of character string problems, you just do C minus whatever value uh, is the base. We're dealing with numbers here, so instead of you know, C, the current character minus A, because we're not dealing with letters, we're going to get the ASCII value of 0 and subtract. This will automatically convert it into the actual integer value of the string. Um, so if the number modulus um, the current character, which it, we convert to an integer, the current integer digit of the uh, number is greater than zero, that means it's not divisible. Um, so if the number was 128, the first part of this loop would check if 128 is divisible by 1, because the current character would be 1, 1, the string version of 1 minus the string version of 0. Um, if it was greater than, that would, you know, give us num modulus 1, and then we'd check if that was greater than 0, which it wouldn't be, and that would be fine. But uh, if it was greater than 0, we'd return false, because we these are the conditions that we don't want to see. If we see a 0 as a character, or if it's not divisible, we return false and it doesn't get added to our output array. If we make it through the whole loop, then we return true. It successfully made it through every, every character is divisible. There's no zeros in it. Um, and yeah, we add all of them. We return true for all of them. We return, we uh, add whatever uh, the values, the correct values into our self dividing nums list and we return that list. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, we submit, works perfectly, there we go. Uh, that's one way to do this problem. Um, the, other, the only other way that I did first, and then I saw it this way, uh, I actually thought of the, I don't know if you guys have checked out my reverse string or reverse integer. Um, the reverse integer specifically, that problem, you can actually just pop the, you can loop through the number uh, digit by digit if we just use the modulus and we, uh, do modulus 10 and divide by 10 as we pop we could pop the last digit off the number check if the original number is divisible by it and then we can just divide the number by 10 and do that until the number is equal to zero and that would be another way to do it that doesn't involve using two string because two string is you know that in itself is a method unnecessary mef method call we don't we might not want to use so uh, I don't want this video to be too long so I'm just going to show you right here idea is to traverse each integer uh, so you just have a left and right boundary you do that loop and then just like I'm saying you you have a temp you have a temp pointer to the current number um, and you want to decrement that and check the last digit right here if the last digit's zero or it's the same kind of deal except we can avoid using two string or if the last digit the whole number the current number isn't divisible by the last digit then you break you can use greater than zero here uh, as well I like greater than zero rather than not equal zero and uh, there you go then you can just add it to the list it's the same kind of solution there uh, this one's pretty good uh, just as good this is the one I implemented first um, but the, I think the string one's easier this one uh, is a little more mathy but uh, let me know if you guys have any other different solutions. I think those are the best ones, but uh, let me know if you find something better. Um, thank you for watching. Check out my other videos. I do them all. So, yeah, thanks. See you guys next time.